Hello and welcome to today's lesson where we're going to look at how you can measure the wave speed in a ripple tank which forms part of the GCSE combined science topic in physics of waves. So in today's lesson we're going to look at how to determine the wave speed in a water wave. So if we are successful and we learn in this lesson we can understand how to calculate wave speed in a water wave. Calculate wave speed of a water wave from experimental values and determine the accuracy of different experimental values which falls into the following part of the AQA combined science specification for physics and in particular required practical activity 20 make observations to identify the suitability of apparatus to measure the frequency wavelength and speed of waves in a ripple tank so in previous lessons we've looked at the idea of wave speed wave speed is the speed at which energy is transferred through a medium it is this is the distance a wave covers in one second and we can calculate wave speed with the following equation wave speed in meters per second is equal to frequency in hertz times by wavelength in meters so to calculate the wave speed the frequency in the wavelength should be measured which can then be used to determine the wave speed so if we are successful and we carry out this investigation correctly we should be able to calculate the wave speed of a wave in a water wave from measurements of wavelength and frequency. So we will need a ripple tank, a low voltage power supply, a lamp and a meter ruler. So you set up the ripple tank as shown in the diagram and make sure there's a large sheet of white card or paper under the tank. You would then pour water to a depth of five millimeters into the tank, adjust the heat of the height of the wooden rod so that it just touches the surface of the water. You switch on an overhead lamp and the electrical motor, adjust the speed of the motor to produce a low frequency water wave, then adjust the height of the lamp so that the patterns of the waves can be clearly seen on the white card underneath. You then place a meter ruler at right angles to the wave shown in the pattern on the card and measure across as many waves as you can. You then divide that length by the number of waves. This gives us the wavelength of the waves and you record this value in the table. You then count the number of waves passing a point in the pattern over a given time, say 10 seconds, and then divide the number of waves counted by 10. This gives the frequency of the waves. You record this value also. You then count Calculate the speed of the waves using the equation wave speed is equal to frequency times by volume. So to, to frequency times by wavelength, sorry. So to calculate the wave speed from a ripple tank, you've got to measure the frequency and wavelengths for water waves. So to understand how this works, you've got to consider what the image you produce in your ripple tank. So you would observe these particular measurements of ripples in, your, in the card underneath your ripple tank. So each ripple can be considered as the peak of a wave. Now when the waves are observed in this orientation, we call the ripple a wavefront because it's the start of a new wave. So this is an example of what we call a wavefront diagram. Now a darkened lab is easy to observe these wave patterns and then you can use a meter ruler positioned at right right angles to the projected wave fronts to, to measure the wavelength. So you'd measure across as many waves as possible, then divide the total length by the number of waves. So in this example, in this darkened lab, we'll place our meter ruler perpendicular to the ripples or wave fronts as shown on the card underneath the ripple tank. You then measure across as many waves as possible and then divide the total length by the number of waves. Now we must ensure that when we do this, that the ruler is placed perpendicular to the wave fronts, otherwise the wavelength is measured inaccurately or as you would get a parallax error in the results. Now to reduce the error of the of this parallax error you would then carry out multiple repeated readings and then an average will be taken of your values. Now you measure over as many waves as possible and then divide to find the average as it reduces the impact of the human error in reading the ruler to find the length. Now we say that the percentage uncertainty in the results has decreased or you could say the impact of your random error has decreased in this investigation. Now taking a picture of this will also reduce the error in the investigation as it's easier to identify where the ripples are in the tank. So this lowers the random error in the investigation. Now again, to measure the frequency, a darkened lab makes it easy to observe the wave pattern you would see underneath the ripple tank, and it's likely you would need only a stopwatch to measure your frequency. Because as you would carry this out, you would look at a particular point and, and measure how many waves are observed past that particular point in a certain time frame. Let's say, for example, 10 seconds. You then divide by the number you've counted by the, the time you've observed to work out your frequency. So what you would do is you'd select 
vector point are in the ripple tank measuring the area. You then count how many waves go past that point in a certain time. So you then, to find the frequency, divide the number of waves by the time. Now the larger the time is taken uh, for the measurement, the lower the impact of the human error in miscounting the waves. So the larger the time that you take, the lower the percentage uncertainty. The larger the number of waves you count, the lower the percentage uncertainty. Now it's difficult for a human to count the number of waves accurately as there'll be a great number every second. So to reduce the human error, you can record a video and count the number of waves in a certain time which you'd slow down the video to make it easier to count. However, for this to work, the video must include the stopwatch. So you record your results in the following results table, both the wavelength being written down and the frequency being written down. Then to calculate the wave speed in meters per second, you would multiply your wavelength in meters by the frequency in hertz. Now, when you're carrying this out, the number of decimal places is given to the number of decimal places the measuring device can record to. So on the example shown on screen, the wavelength must have been measured with a ruler that can measure to three decimal places when the value is given in meters, and we have used a um, stopwatch that can measure time to three decimal places, as shown on the particular frequency measurement. Now, what have we learned in today's lesson? We should be able to make observations to identify the suitability of apparatus to measure the frequency wavelength of speed of waves in a ripple tank and take appropriate measurements. So for being successful and learned in today's lesson, we can understand how to calculate the wave speed in a water wave, calculate the wave speed of water of a water wave from experimental values, and then finally determine the accuracy of different experimental values. I hope you've enjoyed today's lesson looking at the wave speed of waves in a ripple tank, which is part of the GCSE Combined Science course for physics in waves. And thank you very much and have a lovely day.